Warfare has a very ugly history. People all across the globe would do anything to maintain their sovereignty or advance their economic goals. When we speak about African warfare before the colonial era, we rarely, if ever, discuss the use of biological agents. Apparently, it was no secret that Africans were using biological warfare just as much as any other. And so today, we're going to talk about one African state that effectively used these agents to protect its borders. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Admittedly, the only thing I knew concerning biological warfare in Africa was its use amongst coastal Africans in Gambia who were heavily influenced and likely still under Imperial Mali. These Gambians made use of poisonous arrows, which was effective against Portuguese intrusion. Other Africans across the continent used biological agents as well. However, it seems as though there was one African state that consistently defended its borders against powerful kingdoms and empires, incorporating this very strategy. This African state was known as Borgu. Warfare in pre-colonial Africa was a serious business in which both technological and scientific knowledge was utilized. The scientific knowledge involved serious researches into the use of plants and animals with toxin. The toxin from either of the two or the application of the two were used to advance or defend the territorial integrity of their various states. One of the pre-colonial African states that was known to have effectively used the biologicals to defend its territorial integrity was Borgu, a state known to have successfully maintained its independence throughout the pre-colonial period. Borgu is a region that extended from the northeastern and eastern banks of the Niger River and continued westward toward the Alabori Mountains and south of the rainforest of the Yoruba. Today, we recognize Borgu as being part of western Nigeria and northern Benin. For clarity, Borgu was a collection of states ran by the Wasangari or princes. These princes, all recognizing some form of kinship and common origin, formed various states in the Borgu region. The ruling class was said to have first established themselves at Ilo in Nigeria, then at Busa in Nigeria, and finally Niki in Benin. In order for these states to have formed, the princes had to have a strong militia. The Wasangari were the warrior class who invaded countries via horseback. They were the backbone of all military contingents. Warfare was taken as a serious business in Borgu. To an average Borgawa, a military defeat meant death. A Borgawa would never allow himself to be enslaved and would therefore do anything to win even if the war was prolonged or the country was under any siege. The Borgawa soldiers therefore relied on their weapons and biologicals for this greatly desired victory. The principal weapons used by the various Borgu states was the bow and arrow, spear, sword, and the hand axe. But Borgu had another weapon that could not be seen with the naked eye. As it concerned biological warfare, Different methods were used amongst various African peoples. The poisonous agent was usually either a plant or animal, and from there the toxic material was extracted. Some used both plants and animals in combination to create the toxic formula. This was mostly the method in Borgu. In the case of Borgu, the preparation varied from state to state, but the most popular method was the combination of toxins from plants and animals. The act of poisoning was known as sewi, and the plant used was the Strophantus hispidus, called dia, locally grown in the country. This plant is especially known or obtainable in a rocky place. Its seeds were needed for the biologicals. The animals used tended to be snakes, caterpillars, some insects, and even bees. The extracted poison was then coated on the weapons of war. According to one source, this poison could last on the weapon for about 50 years. One very interesting way Borgu used biological warfare was not to totally destroy, but 
to hypnotize. To hypnotize the enemies, the Batanu of Borgu had a powdery substance which was spread at the war front. If inhaled by the enemies, it had the effect of taking the enemies into a stupor, becoming drowsy or sleepy. When this was done, the Borgawa would easily capture and enslave the victims. The methods used by the Borgu states apparently were so effective that their use accompanied with other military factors helped them to consistently defend their region from multiple African kingdoms and empires. Empires such as Songa, Sokoto and Oyo, and kingdoms such as the Hausa, Nupe, and even Daomi with their famous female warrior contingents. In fact, one European visitor witnessed the use of biological warfare from a Borgu state. Makli Ferryman traveled up the Niger and documented the Daomi invasion of Borgu territory, claiming himself that their poison arrows enabled them to hold their own with the forces of Daomi, notwithstanding the latter's muskets. So even the Daomi military, equipped with muskets, could not defeat this Borgu state and their biological warfare tactics. I cannot stress enough the significance of Borgu maintaining its sovereignty against multiple, very powerful African states. Empires such as Songhai and Sokoto alone were seemingly invincible for a period of time. Repulsing their attacks alone is more than worthy of note. Finally, Borgu was not just known for creating the poisonous agents, but also creating the antidote known as Bawani. This antidote even saved the life of Lord Lugard, a British soldier and the eventual Governor General of Nigeria. Although biological warfare was used across Africa, Borgu seemed to have had plenty of opportunity in putting it to use and creating a system in which it was readily available and effective. It's rare we hear about the consistent use of multiple biological agents in Africa and how it helped to maintain the structural integrity of a sovereign state against multiple empires. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>